Hey everyone, welcome into the Flippin' Hippos YouTube channel. I'm Star. If you're new here or you haven't already, please consider subscribing and hit the thumbs up at some point while you're watching or before you leave because that really helps us out a lot. And if you're not a part of our Facebook group, Flippin' Hippos Reseller Pod, you should be. Go join us over there. So today we're going to talk about one of my most requested videos in the past few weeks. I've been getting tons of messages and um, emails and comments everywhere. People want to know how we moved our business across the country successfully without losing our sanity. And we actually did it twice in under two years. So the first thing we did was we are organized people. So even before we decided we were moving, we already have really good systems in place, good processes. Our inventory management is on par. So we have a bin system and all of our inventory is already in bins labeled and that's in our SKU lines. So that was a step that didn't even need to be taken when we moved because we have a really great inventory management system in place. All we had to do was tape the bins shut. The movers were willing to take the bins without making us pack all of our inventory into boxes. So we had 92 bins full of clothing and plush, and we just wrapped tape around them. Uh, the movers did request that we taped the lids on. We did have some plush in the larger IKEA bags, not the tote bags you're familiar with, but they're large rectangle bags that zip all the way around. I really like keeping plush in those because the front of it, you can tape a piece of paper on to, to number the bag as part of like the system that we use, but they stack really nice. Movers won't take those, so we did have to put those in bins and boxes, but we still kept everything in the bag. So when we got here and the movers unloaded us, Bins just went right into the garage. They're already labeled. All we had to do was snip the tape as things in those bins sold. We didn't really take that much time to snip all the tape. We just put all of our bins back in order. And then if something in somewhere sold, we snipped it open. So that, that was how we moved the inventory so easy. Now, if you have hard goods, it's probably going to be a little bit harder for you if you do any kind of collectibles or hard goods. If you have a lot of vintage clothing that you hang up on racks probably going to be a little bit harder and you're going to have to take some time to pack that ahead of time. But if you are a clothing seller and you are using a system where you're keeping your clothing in bends, you're pretty much already packed, to be honest. Um, the other thing is we are super organized in our routines and our processes of how we do everything. And everything we do or need to do is written in my bullet journal. Um, this is my bullet journal. Keith doesn't keep one of his own because he uses mine. So this is for me, for my to-dos. I write down stuff for me. Uh, I do put personal stuff in here. So I just want to make sure it's okay to show this page. So this is a good example. Um, you can see as we were getting closer to the move, I was writing stuff down that we needed to do. We went to Wizarding World of Harry Potter, um, call utilities, set up checks for the new place. Um, you can see email Stacy, that's our property management manager. Pack up the office. I've got all my errand ins on there. Our change of address when we wanted to put it in. Um, so this is mine. I always suggest people make a bullet journal. Some people don't like the pens and paper old fashioned system and they'll use their phone. And that's great if you need to keep your schedule or your routine or your to do's in your phone, you can. They have apps that can help you get organized. You can just keep notes, whatever you need to do. The reason I like the old fashioned way is because I can go back in and write stuff later if I need to. I can go out as far as I want to. I can add posty notes. I can add stickers. I can color code it. Um, I can show you like in February, I write everything in pink and red and March. I'm such a nerd. March, everything's in green. Um, July, everything's in red and blue. Um, so I, I like these. I can put tabs 
and bullet journals are not just for your calendar and your schedule. You can put to-do lists, you can put goals, you can put your budget, you can put your grocery list, your menu rotation. If you are as organized as me and you have a menu rotation, you can put people's birthdays, you can put phone numbers you need, you can put addresses you need, the days you have to pay your bills. Um, you can keep a list of your current medications, your mom's current medications, if you help her out and take her to the doctor. And then you can also use it like a journal and you can write down where you ate, where you, what movies you watched, what you did on date night, what your kids said that was funny that day. You can just keep track of so much in these. Um, this isn't supposed to be a bullet journal video, but I'm telling you, that's how we move successfully because of my bullet journal, really is how we kept our sanity and stayed so organized. Um, moving the inventory was easy because we have a good inventory management system. But as far as everything else that goes with a move that's entailed, it's because of this, because we write everything down. So hopefully you know you're going to move like two, three months ahead of time. And then you just start making your lists and start putting things on your calendar. So your lists need to include all of the places that you pay money to where you live currently and then you need to put on your calendar when you need to call these places to let them know you're moving you know you're electric if you have gas water sewage uh garbage landlords all that stuff because you need to call them and say hey i'm leaving on the 28th and then arrange for them to cut it out of your name. You'll need to have a forwarding address to give them in most instances so they can send you your final bill and or any refunds owed you. So make a list of those. And then remember, there's a mirroring one on the other end. So as you're writing, you know, utilities, Florida, right? Utilities, Pennsylvania, car insurance, Florida, car insurance, Pennsylvania, because you're going to have most of the same bills and places to call internet, cable, um, so we made those lists as soon as we knew we were leaving. And when we had a solid specific date on when we were leaving, after we called the moving truck, we called all of these places in Florida, let them know when we were leaving, set them up with our new forwarding address, and then called all the same places out here in Pennsylvania and said, hey, this is the house we're moving into. This is the date we'll be there. This is when we want the utilities turned on. So it's as simple as making lists and then putting the things you need to do on the days you need to do them. As far as calling the moving truck, as soon as our application process was approved here and we put uh, the first and last month's rent, deposit, all that good stuff they want here, and we signed the lease, uh, we went ahead and called, called moving companies. And so what we did there was Keith went on in, the internet, researched them, made a list. I called four or five, got the best price. That's who we went with. When they gave me a date, I wrote it down in the book. So that's basically it. Our solutions, our routines, our processes, all of it boils simply down to lists. That's really how we stay organized. That's how we run our lives. That's how we do everything. Um, lists. That's it. You got to have a, a, some kind of system to write your list and some kind of way to schedule out. And then you need to think of everything you need to do. So from beginning to end, um, we decided we were moving. We started looking for places. We made lists of those and called and talked to landlords and set up appointments to look at the place. How'd you do that? You guys were in Florida. Keith has family out here. So his dad would go on the walkthroughs and meet up with the folks. And anytime we were super interested. We would um, do the application process. And we actually only did two applications. One was to one um, rental company that had two houses we were interested in, and one was here. And I'm actually glad we ended up here. But um, we had lists of different rental properties that we were looking at. And we just called them, found the one we wanted, and wrote in here, send the application in, uh, go on Bank of, we have Bank of America, so you can go right in there and you can schedule like a paper check. So that's how we sent them all the, the deposits and all that from Florida to Pennsylvania. I just set up Bank of America to send checks. And then we made a list of these are all the places we're going to need to call from the moving truck, utilities, renter's insurance, all that stuff. Then we wrote down in my journal you saw. Go to the post office, do your change of address forms. I have down the day we went in and closed out our post office box. And when I wrote that in here, 
Um, I think this is okay. Sometimes I do write personal stuff in here, so I just want to be careful. Um, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. That's the day we went to Star Wars. You can see um, I have there our cleaning list at the old place. So clean the bathrooms, run the dishwasher empty because I wanted to make it clean. Stove, microwave, post office, bank, dusting. All, I mean, we literally write down everything. Drop spectrum equipment at UPS. The truck came, drive me to PA. Um, but yeah, when I wrote down the post office, I knew that I was going to need another one here. So I went to the first Monday that we were going to be here and wrote post office. Um, so this is okay to show you. Um, we've got call progressive to change car insurance. Um, I actually did that back in Florida, but I wanted to make sure they had said on the 28th it was going to flip from Florida to here. So I just want to make sure. Um, Keith had to change his business license to Pennsylvania. I had to go over and change my health insurance. Um, you can see our washer and dryer delivery is here because the Sunday before that, um, I had written down in, in here to go to Lowe's and look at washers and dryers so we could purchase them. Um, that was like one of the most important first step things we did even before the truck came. Did you see my video on washing everything that you thrift? Yes, having a washer and dryer is super important. So uh, our very first, we got here Friday night and that Saturday we were down at Lowe's getting a washer and dryer and then we went over to Walmart for food and paper products to hold us over till our actual dishes got here. Um, Spirit Halloween store because I always go to Spirit Halloween store after Halloween. It's where I buy my home decor at 50% off. Get a post office box, switch car registration, address changes. Um, that's for the social media stuff. So we put in our actual change of address forms back in Florida. Um, but when we got here, you can see I wrote here that I needed to go online and change them everywhere. You have to change your address on eBay, Poshmark, Mercari, Grail, Pirate Ship. And for us, there's a website, there's an email subscriber list, there is Instagram, there is TikTok, there's tons of places where we have our P.O. box. I had to put our new one in for folks instead of our Florida one. Um, the reason that all that says is address changes and there's not like a specified list is because we had just moved to Florida less than a year and a half ago. And I actually have a list in my old bullet journal from 2021 that broke it down exactly everywhere we needed to go to do those address changes. And so I just went in my old one and went off of that list. This is from 2021. Um, but you probably, if this was the first time you were moving would write all that down just so you don't forget anybody. I mean, you got to change your address at your bank, all your shopping platforms, your selling platforms. Uh, if you're social media and you put out your post office box anywhere, your YouTube description everywhere, it's got to be changed. Um, so I have when the truck was coming here, when the internet guy was coming to hook it up, Bill and David came into town. Um, Uh, his grandfather's surgery, which actually had gotten moved to the first, but I usually do arrows when I move stuff. And we did curtains and the desk. Um, so hang pictures, go out to eat, the movie I watched. Just everything goes in here. And that is a simple way that we stay sane. Um, you just have to sit down with paper and pen sometimes and think from beginning to end and then reverse it. Think from end backwards and make sure you have everything written down that you need to do. And again, it's most of it's mirrored. So if you're making your list of this is what I need to do before we leave, chances are you're going to need to do that again on the other side. So just keep track of, you know, two lists of what I need to do before I leave, what I need to do when I get there and write it down. Give yourself tasks on certain days and do them and check them off as you go. Check them off. And remember, a lot of these moving um, companies and the post office change of address forms, some of those even have like little checklists or reminders of what you need to do when you leave. So you can look at those and make sure you got everything. But really, I think the biggest thing is getting a place, securing a moving truck, 
packing your stuff, cleaning your old place, cleaning the new place, unpacking, and then getting everything set up for your business. And that's just making lists. That's all it is. The only other thing I would really recommend, really hard, hard recommend this to you. If you know you're doing this several months ahead of time, start packing several months ahead of time. Trying to get an entire house packed up uh, and inventory because we're not just moving ourselves. I mean, we have businesses to move as well. So you do not want to be faced at the last minute of I've got to pack up my whole house plus all of my inventory. Start doing it months ahead of time. If you know you're moving months ahead of time, do it months ahead of time. We actually sat down and made lists for that as well, like room by room. And we packed up stuff we weren't going to need. You see my books back there? They're nice to look at. I read them. From time to time, I revisit my favorites. But in the months leading up to moving here, I knew I wasn't going to read them. So we packed them up. We packed up a lot of these um, little guys you see around here. Didn't need them. Um, we packed up a lot of the um, extra towels and sheets and stuff. And kind of like kept the minimal amount that we needed to use. As we got closer, we started packing up the kitchen and went down to paper products. And as we got even closer to the end, we literally each picked out like a week's worth of clothing. Um, we have three suitcases. So we used one of those to move computers and laptops and business stuff that we needed with us that we weren't going to put in the mover's truck that we needed in the car. But then we each got our own suitcase and we put those clothes in there and everything else got packed. So we packed into our entire closets and dressers and just lived out of suitcases for a week or two. Um, but yeah, we assessed like, you know, this can books, movies, knickknacks, things like that, board games. Those could be packed up three months out, two months out. You might want to start packing up um, towels and clothes because you can really live with a couple of towels and clothes if you're doing laundry a couple times a week. Um, the, the business, the garage was the last thing to get packed. Very, very last minute. Um, like I said, it was already packed though. If we had a lot of hard goods or vintage items that we had to hang, we probably would approach that a little bit differently, but because it was really a matter of just taping bins together of our remotes and our clothing and our plush, we just put that off as long as we could until we put the store on hold when the truck was going to be there and then went in and taped everything. So, I mean, I don't, I don't think I've missed anything. If I did, if you have any more questions about how to move across the country successfully or any questions about how we did it, comments, you want to leave those. Um, if I missed anything and there was like a specific Thing you were interested in about moving across the country um because i don't think i missed anything but i probably did because guess what before doing this video i did not sit down and make a list i was like you know what i've done this twice in less than two years i know how to do it from start to finish i don't need to make a, a notes or list for my video i'll just be able to talk about it and tell you all what we did so hopefully i didn't miss anything but if i did let me know guys Go be productive. Go make some money. Thank you so, so much for watching. Y'all are the best. Bye.